A Connecticut bishop known for unorthodoxy is spearheading a new catechetical effort. The prelate presented the idea of launching an institute for the catechism this year at the Spring Assembly for the U.S. Bishops' Conference, the USCCB. Church Militant's William Mahoney has more on the bishop and his initiative. In this new springtime, Bridgeport's Bishop Frank Cajano's new catechetical project is raising eyebrows. Heading the project as the chair of the subcommittee on the catechism, Cajano is also chairman of the board for Catholic Relief Services, the USCCB's nominally Catholic charity arm that pushes contraception and has Planned Parenthood, the nation's largest abortion chain, in its referral network. It's going to be first come, first serve. And in the Episcopal battle on whether to enforce canon law or continue to permit fake Catholic politicians like Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi to Holy Communion, Cajano seems to be on the side of the latter. We wear these masks, my friends, not to protect ourselves, but in an act of Christian love for our neighbor known and unknown. The Connecticut bishop was one of the 68 prelates in early June to sign a letter to USCCB President Los Angeles Archbishop Jose Gomez to squash a discussion on Eucharistic coherence. Which will be given up for you. In 2018, Kajano appointed a self-described modernist and feminist laywoman to oversee a parish. After the death of Father John Barron, the pastor of St. Anthony of Padua in Fairfield, the bishop chose Dr. Eleanor Sowers. He claimed at the time his decision was based on several factors the uniqueness of the parish community, his deep appreciation for the work that Eleanor has already done here, and the precedent in other dioceses across the country for this model of pastoral leadership. Sauer's work includes a dissertation on the parish titled St. Anthony of Padua Parish, a case study of the transformation of a Roman Catholic parish. In that dissertation, she describes parish life prior to 2002 as rigid, clericalist, and authoritarian. There is that one line that Dorothy speaks towards the end. There is no place like home. Cajano's Institute for the Catechism will change how catechetical materials are evaluated in what the prelate calls the next evolutionary stage. One main difference will be when the material is evaluated by theological consultants appointed by Cajano's subcommittee. You could take it in many different directions. Mm -hmm. It will be involved during the creation process rather than at the end. Before they ought to be blessed, we must be properly disposed. Critics are skeptical, worried this institute for the catechism could do even greater harm, considering Bishop Cajano's unorthodox track record. Good report, William. You know, Cajano is one of many bishops who uh, either know everything that's horrible in the church and just cover it up or is completely ignorant. Back in 2017, Church Militant went down to a, a, a Catholic leadership forum conference meeting in Orlando. And we were passing out these flyers that said, save our church on it. And we bullet pointed maybe five or six things, you know, the homosexuality and the priesthood, all this stuff. The year before, this was the summer before McCarrick, Caggiano sat in the midst of like two or 3,000 lay people who had been handpicked by the bishops and scoffed at it and said, the church doesn't need saving. It already has a savior. See how clever I am with my, with my little turn of phrases and everything. Uh, if the church doesn't need... Uh, all kinds of hard work and saving. What are you opening up an institute for the catechism for? Yeah, I, I don't understand that at all. I mean, this is a guy's, yeah, I've listened to him too. I've listened to some of his homilies and stuff and it's like this, you know, they, they sort of, it's kind of like that Dolan sort of thing where they say things that sound kind of Catholic, but it's not really deep or anything. And um, this is also a guy who obviously has no interest in the church's canon law either because he was one of the signers on the list, the letter to Archbishop Gomez, who's the head of the USCCB, mm -hmm. to try to crush the conversation on the Eucharist, uh, Eucharistic coherency. Yeah, when, when, you, when you sort of look across the board, and I think this is something that, that uh, as, as lay Catholics who you know, are busy with their normal lives, unlike us here, who are in this all the time, <laughs> but they seem to have this idea in their mind that there's good bishops and there's bad bishops, probably more bad than good, but that's, the, no, you need to think of this more along the lines of a spectrum where uh, you, know, you have a solid orthodox, like a, you know, a St. John Fisher, and then everybody scales down from that. Some are really horrible and mm -hmm. sucky, awful, horrible, evil, rotten guys, and the rest are look good by comparison. And that's sort of the st status of the hierarchy, certainly in the U.S. right now. I think that's exactly right. Uh, you know, I remember when Dolan was bishop out in Milwaukee, and he had said something pro-life, and I remember my dad was like, oh, this bishop, he's so great. And I said, I said, wait, wait, 
He's saying the bare minimum. I mean, that is so basic. You don't even, I mean, you can get this from natural law. You don't need, you know, the church does teach that, but you can get this from natural law against abortion. I said, don't, don't, don't throw all your eggs into that basket because he said something good. And we found out over time that Dolan's, uh, you know, not good at all. He's, he's on this end of the spectrum that yeah, you're talking he's, about. Yeah, he's farther down there. So, so bad as Supich. Yeah, but Supich isn't the bar. Yeah, I mean. St. John yeah. Fisher is the bar as far as specifically bishops, exactly and our right. Lord is the bar. Yep. That's a long haul. That's a long haul for all of us. But, you know, I'm sorry, bishops have the grace of office. If they disregard that, and many of them do, and here's another one, yep. you know, good luck to them. Yeah. Bishop Caggiano is from Brooklyn, where he served as a priest and then auxiliary bishop. He was ordained by Brooklyn's current ordinary, Bishop Nicholas DiMarzio, who, by the way, is being sued for sex abuse cover-up, who also signed the letter to crush discussions on Eucharistic coherency.